Alright, more Colan Selection Plus cards, this time with both Volume 1 and Volume 2, mainly concerning most about the chaos. So let's begin. But first, cards from the last few days. We're gonna start off with the more Kumo cards, which are all Shiryuki cards, with the first one being Apprentice Yokai Sasame Yuki. Grade 1 AK Power Net Skills. Auto Vanguard. When placed on the top 7 cards of your deck, reveal one card with Shiryuki and its card name and put it to your hand. One of these consistency cards. Second skill. Auto Rearguard. Once per turn. When your Vanguard with Shiryuki and its card name is placed, you may Soul Charge 1. Kind of likely that you will be rewriting Shiryuki's considering that you're going to be using quite a bit of soul, but I don't like the idea of riding something just to get some resources. But much needed indeed for Shiryuki because soul is needed. Next, Ice Fang Princess Tsurarahime. Grade 2, 9k power and its skills. Auto Vanguard. When placed, you may call one Shiryuki card from your hand to rear guard. If you called, return that called rear guard at the end of the turn. And if you have one or less card in soul, soul charge one. Alright, not too bad with that skill. You can get some early game pressure, and the extra resource is nice, but it's second skill. Auto Rearguard at the end of the turn, if you have a Vanguard with Shiryoki in its card name, cost put this card to soul, and you can return a normal unit from your Rearguard to your hand. This is pretty decent because it will let you reuse on place abilities, but you mainly want to return those Shiryukis because they will be called to Rearguard, and of course Shiryuki essentially acts like a Guardian. So this is a must have. In which we go to the remake of the G form of Six Flowers of Phantasm Shiryugi. Grade 3, Excel, 12k power, and skills. Count, deck, drop zone. This card is also regarded as Fantasy Petal Storm Shiryuki. Of course, it helps Murakumo with this because Murakumo is all about duplication at the same time, so counting it as that actually helps. And its second skill, Auto Guardian, when plays, costs Soul Blast 2, choose one of your opponent's front row units, and it gets minus 3k power until the end of the battle. Yeah, that's a lot. Now, the main difference about this Shiryuki with the original form is that the original form decreases the whole front row and lasts for a whole entire turn. So each one really depends on situation. Third skill, Auto Vanguard Rearguard. When your unit's attack does not hit, if you have Vanguard with Shiryuki and Scar name cost Counter Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's front row units and it gets minus 10k power until the end of turn. And if this card is on Vanguard, you may call one Shiryuki from your drop zone to Rearguard. So this card enables a bit of multi-attack if it's on your Vanguard. What's nice is that this could be a decent finisher, because if your opponent's at 5 damage, they will have to guard every attack, and your third skill will activate because your unit's attack does not hit, you can call another copy of itself from your drop zone, and that one can attack and it will of course miss, which will of course decrease your opponent's power even more. Now the only problem is that it says that it has to be an open rearguard circle, but there is a lot of potential with this skill. So a nice addition to the archetype. And now to the Link Joker cards, which are also Star Vader. Our first card is Star Vader Craving Claw. Grade 1 AK Power and its skill is Auto Vanguard Rearguard. When this card attacks or the attack boosted hits a Vanguard, look at the top 5 cards of your deck, reveal 1 Star Vader from among them and put it to your hand. I don't like attack hit skills, but the second skill is where you want to care about. Act Rearguard. If your opponent's Vanguard is Great 3 or Greater, cost, put this card to your soul, choose one of your opponent's lock cards and unlock it, and if you unlock a card, choose one of your opponent's rear guards other than that unlock unit and lock it. Yes, opponent locking is coming back in standard, which is something I don't like personally. But this second skill does help Chaos Breaker because obviously it's going to be a copy and paste of the old one, where you can retire the unlock unit and get some extra benefits. And also the fact that you can change one of those unwanted unlocked units to one that you want to lock with, aka the front row. And also provide souls, so this is going to be pretty helpful. Next, Splitting Star Vader, Sekonia. Grade 2, take your power and skill is Auto Vanguard Rira. When placed, if you have Vanguard with Star Vader its card name, cost kind of last one, your opponent looks at the top of their deck and put it on an open rear guard as locked. If that lock card was in the back row, you draw a card, and this unit gets plus 10k power. This skill is obviously good, because it forces your opponent to add one additional lock card, and if your opponent decides not to put it in the front row, you get extra pluses. And you can change the lock card to a different lock card with Craving Claw. So your opponent will have to make the choice. Either you're going to get extra pluses, but they get an additional attack, or they lose an attack, but you don't get extra pluses. So I like it, but second skill. Auto Rearguard. If your opponent's Vanguard is Great Threat Greater, and your opponent has a locked card, the original crit of your Vanguard becomes 2. 
Well, I guess we're playing Force 1 in this deck again, too. Although it makes sense, because they don't want to make you have like multiple copies of this, and then just make your Chaos Breaker into like crit of 3 or 4, so I understand. And now to the Tuesday stream, first off some promos. Our first card is Triple Dark Armor. Grade 2, tanky power and it's skills. Count Vanguard during your turn, all your front row Triple Dark Armors get plus 5k. Too much like Murakumo. Second skill, Act Vanguard Rearguard. Cost Soul Blast 1, re retire a rearguard that is not self. Search your deck for one Triple Dark Armor and call it to rearguard. Complete crap, don't run it. Our second card is a Dark Irregular, Werewolf Kitsur. Grade 1 AK Power its skill is Auto. When retired from your Guardian, you may put this card into Soul. That's okay, but second skill, Act Soul, cost Bind this card and Soul Charge 2. Now that's a pretty useful skill. Not sure if you're going to have room for it though. And Dimension Creeper is actually much better. Next for Champion cards, we got a Chaos Breaker Imaginary Gift, and a Narukami Desert Gunner Golden. Grade 2, 9k power and skills. Auto Vanguard, at the end of your opponent's turn, if your opponent has one or less front row rear guards, cost Soul Blast 1 draw a card. At the end of your opponent's turn. Seriously? Second skill, Auto Rear Guard, at the end of the battle that this card attacked, if your Vanguard's attack hit this turn, cost put this card to soul, draw a card. Too slow, don't bother running it. And now to the clan selection stuff. For the ASRs, we got Chrono Jet and Majesty Lord Blaster. Really think it should have been next stage instead of Chrono Jet, mainly because both of them should display protagonists' evolved boss units. And to the cards itself, let's start with the Royal Paladin stuff. Our first card is Charging Jewel Knight Marvidus. Grade 1, 8k power and skills. Act rearguard, cost combo boss 1, put a normal unit from your drops onto the bottom deck, soul charge 1. And one of your jewel knights get plus 5k power into the end turn. Nice recycling and also nice soul charge engine right here. And the power gain also works for itself as well, so that's nice. Second skill, auto vanguard rearguard. When your other unit is placed on this unit circle, draw a card. You could literally just ride on top of this card and then you just get a free draw. So that's nice too. But, if this card is on rear guard, you're going to be doing some multi-attack. So calling a unit on top of a force marker is very likely, and you kind of want this on top of a force marker for that attack, so you could get some extra benefits. So I will say, this is pretty decent. Next, Explode June Knight Leole. Grade 2, tank your power and skills. Auto rear guard. When this card attacks, cost put 2 normal units from your drops onto the bottom of the deck, and soul charge 1. And this unit gets plus 5k power until the end of battle. Basically like the grade 1, but better. No counter blasts, and free soul charging with power. But it also has a second skill, which is similar to the grade 1, Auto Vanguard Rearguard. When another unit is placed on this unit's circle, that unit gets with 10k power in the end of turn. Like I said with the grade 1, you could just ride on top of this and then gain that 10k power buff. And it's also very likely you're going to be calling on top of this, because Spirit Calling is a thing in Royal Paladins. Especially with Ashley's playstyle, which is of course gonna be multi-attack, spoiler alert. So very good card. In which we go to Pure Hard Jewel Knight Ashley. Grade 3, 13 power, four sentence goes Auto Vanguard Regard. At the end of the battle, this card tax costs Soul Blast 2. Search your deck for one grade 2 or less Jewel Knight card and call it to a rear guard. If it's on Vanguard, you can call two instead. Like I said, multi-attack. The Soul Blast cost is maybe heavy, but your other Jewel Knights that we revealed earlier are able to do quite a bit of soul charging, so pulling this off shouldn't be much of a problem. But its second skill, Auto Vanguard Regard. When another unit is placed on this unit circle, just like the other ones, costs Chiron Blast 1, and that placed unit gets plus 1 critical into the end turn. Like the other ones, very likely because you're going to be doing Superior Calling, especially with its first skill. And if this card's on Vanguard, of course you can just literally ride another unit, and that unit could just get an extra crit. But the best part is, if you play this in Premium, since it says when another unit is placed, if you stride on top of this card, you can use the skill to give that unit a crit. So overall, a nice card and a nice engine. Now we just need some more Jewel Knights, so we have some more options. In Standard, anyway. And now for the card that we're all waiting for, Star Vader Chaos Breaker Dragon. Grade 3, 13k power, no gif. Yes, no gif. And it's skills. Auto Vanguard Regard. During your turn, if your opponent has a lock card, plus 10k power. That's an easy condition, no questions asked. Second skill. Act Vanguard. Once per turn, cost combo 1. 
your opponent gets an imaginary gift force and choose one of your opponent's rearguards and lock it. Well then I guess you should put all your imaginary gifts on your vanguard then, if you face this thing. Not like that's gonna matter because the third skill, auto vanguard. When your opponent's lock card is unlocked, cost soul blast one, retire one of those unlocked units, draw a card, and your opponent removes a total of two gift markers from their field and hand, and you get an imaginary gift force for each marker removed. So what you can do is use Chaos Breaker's lock skill to lock one of your opponent's rear guards, and then use Craving Claw to unlock it to unlock another card, and because you unlocked a rear guard, you can use Chaos Breaker's third skill to kill that retired rear guard and then get your pluses. And if you use Zircon you can make it where your opponent's whole front row is completely locked. And Chaos Breaker will be 23k with at least 2 crits, without a marker. Gift marker removal was kind of expected with this. Lock was a 50-50 and it did bring back its old retire unlock units to draw a card. Although one big problem I see with Chaos Breaker right now is that it heavily relies on your opponent having rear guards. Without it, the deck is really weak. And if you don't have a way to unlock during your turn, you're not going to have any gift markers for your turn. So Craving Claw is a necessity for this deck currently, while Zircon is just more extra pressure and combo extender. So the deck will need more support to be really good, although I do kind of feel bad for Valkyrian though. It's also nice Cyber Dragon support because this card is obviously a Cyber Dragon, so you can use this card as a first ride. Doesn't match the playstyle, but still works. And what I like about this card, is that this card doesn't have a gift, but in cost of having a skill that lets you accelerate your gifts. And I think that's a good cost right there. But looking at this card makes me really feel bad about the Valkyrian deck, and kind of unfortunate that they didn't choose this Scorch War Dragon playstyle, which I call Vanishing Lock. Because I think that was an interesting mechanic. But overall, pretty decent. And finally, next week we got Evil God Bishop Goss Steel. The hype may be over, but the excitement continues. So that's it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. What do you guys think about the Shiryuki, Ashley, and Chaos Breaker? I think all three are decent in their respective clans. The Shiryuki cards are obviously meant for Shiryuki, but I would say it's a good budget option for Murakumo. The Jewel Knights are a pretty decent Soul Charge engine, and also decent kill fodder for your multi attacks, with Ashley being a decent first ride alternative option for many decks, and Chaos Breaker is just Chaos Breaker as it's a completely different playstyle to other Link Jokers in Standard for bringing back Lock, and at the cost of its own gift marker, it gains a skill that generates more gift markers. And also the fact that it's a Cyber Dragon that works on first ride is also nice. With all the clan with all their engine support cards working pretty well in both Standard and Premium. Although Chaos Breaker will need some more support compared to the other archetypes, but so far I do like all three of them. But in that, have a nice day, and I'll definitely be using Ashley for my Sanctuary Guard deck.